When you teach SEAL, the emotion wheel can be a very powerful tool for students to identify and discuss their emotions and those of others as well. Making their own emotion wheel can really help students to identify with their emotions in a different way and at a deeper level. My name is Elizabeth Peterson, and I am the creator of SEAL, Social Emotional Artistic Learning, where we take the best of what arts integration is and couple it with the need to address students' social and emotional well-being. One of our best SEAL tools is the Emotion Wheel, which you can actually download if you go to teachseal.com, and I'll also put the link to it inside the description. This tool really helps students when they're having trouble identifying their emotions. But today, we're going to take it to a different level and actually invite students to create their own emotion wheel. You can do this face-to-face -face and remote. I've done it both ways with a lot of success, and I know you will too. So feel free to share this video with your students and their families. And I'll even put a link in the description that will start this video from the point where I actually start the demonstration. And let's get to that demonstration right now. So to start your emotion wheel, you just need a piece of paper, obviously. Um, you're going to start with any size piece of paper that you actually want to use. This is a normal 8.5 by 11 from the printer. You can kind of experiment and maybe even use some different size papers to see what might be unique to what you are actually looking for. All right, so I'm thinking of having my emotion wheel be something I can use to put into the sleeve of my binder. We can start with a freehand circle. And sometimes just the act of doing this can be very mindful and relaxing. And the more you do it <laughs> with lightly with a pencil, it kind of eventually starts to really look like a decent circle. Of course, you can also trace a circle. You know, I found this nice cover to um, a coffee uh, container. That will work. A paper plate is good too. You want something that's pretty decent size that's going to fill up your paper. Because the more size you have, the more space you have to kind of fill it in. So I'm just going to do a freehand one. I'm going to start with a dot in the center of the circle. I'm going to estimate it. Now I want to make this into um, eight equal pieces. You can use a ruler if you want to make the lines straight and just have the lines go through the center of the circle and make them into eight equal pieces. Or <laughs> This can kind of be a nice addition to it. Instead of doing it with a ruler, kind of add your own unique style and personality to this by creating lines from the center to the circumference of the circle. But what the ruler lines underneath kind of do for me is give me a guide of where to put my lines. And now I have my eight pieces inside my emotion wheel. Now I'm going to label these with um, different emotions. Now if you have an emotion wheel, like our seal tool, the emotion wheel, you can look through all the various emotions and circle and choose the ones that you want to put inside your personal emotion wheel. This is such a great resource because it has some different words and emotions that maybe you've never really thought about. Um, but you can use this or you can kind of just do a little brainstorm of your own. So that's what I did here on this piece of paper is I brainstormed some of the emotions that I want to put into my emotion wheel. Now you can decide how you want to put your words. You can start writing your emotions around the outside of your wheel. You can also decide, you know, do you want to rotate your paper and write your words so that they're all facing the center? Or do you want to kind of make it so that when you're looking at from one standpoint, you can see all the words 
in one direction. You know, you can put it on the outside or if you wanted to use the words to take up a little bit more space, you could write the words and actually take up the entire piece of the emotion wheel. That's probably something I'll tend to do because I'm not a very good illustrator and so I'll probably use the space for the words and also some color and design. I'll actually do that with more than just those two as well. The thing about this is that you can make some adjustments as you go. It's all part of the process. The next step is looking at how we're going to add some color and some details. Now you could use you could use Sharpie to really um, do some good outlining, or you could just use some regular markers or colored pencils. So for example, right now I'm missing a black marker, so I'm going to take out my colored pencils and I'm going to use that to really highlight or outline the lines and the outside of the circle as well. And again, I guess this is more or less a little bit of a lesson in being flexible, right? If you don't have the exact materials that you were hoping or that you're expected to have, make do, figure out a solution to your problem. Flexibility is such a good trait to have and to practice. You can also think of this as a rough draft, right? And if you wanted, you could test test different ways out that you might want to do your emotion wheel and then go ahead and start a different paper and make a nice final copy of what you really are looking to, um, to have in your emotion wheel. And sometimes when you're doing things like outlining like I am and it's not exactly coming out perfect the first time, it does give me the opportunity to kind of go with it a little bit and, I don't know, kind of figure out different ways to make my letters and emphasize little spots in there. Of course, this doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be. And as you're working through each word, be mindful of how things are going and how you're creating the letters and what colors you might be using and choosing to use. So you know what? It's all part of the process of how you go about things. Making this your own is just as important as making it in the first place. Because the more you put into it, the more you put your own unique style into it, the more you're going to actually want to use it. And it's going to be just that much more special to you. So now I have it all done in colored pencil. I've stressed and <laughs> outlined all the words and all the lines inside of my emotion wheel and now I'm ready to think about color. Now I could continue with the colored pencil. I also have my markers here that I might use. I'm gonna think about what colors kind of go with each of these emotions and work with them in that way. And I may even combine a little bit of colored pencil and a little bit of um, marker as well just to kind of give it a neat little textured effect. Again, you know, if you have some different kinds of skills, certainly add your own flair, your own uniqueness to your emotion wheel. The best thing is when everybody just has their own unique personality com coming out on their emotion wheel and it gives us a chance to really do some good discussions about, you know, why did you choose to do it this way? Why did another person choose to do it another way?
to me, using color is just a nice way for me to kind of show my artistic um, expression about different things without the stress of not being a very skilled artist, still learning a lot of different ways to create art. And to me, this is just a nice relaxing way to go about making my emotion wheel. And as you're coloring and as you're creating and as you're drawing inside each spot of your emotion wheel, really take some time to be mindful of what you're doing. If your mind starts to wander, kind of bring it back to the movement you're making with your colors and the meaning behind the color and the design that you're creating and the illustration that you're making and the facial expressions that you might be putting on your characters inside. Maybe your character is yourself in the various emotions. There are, of course, so many ways to make your own emotion wheel. This is just one way, and after you learn one way, of course, you can be creative and try it in many ways as well. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how to use your emotion wheel now that you've created it. The first thing you want to do is you want to have it available to yourself. This is really important to actually know where your emotion wheel is. There are so many different places you can put it. You can hang it up in your room. You can hang it over your desk. You can put it in the sleeve of your binder or even punch holes in it and stick it inside your binder. This is a great thing to use for self-awareness. You want to do this for yourself so that you can refer to your emotion wheel anytime you want. So how do you actually use your emotion wheel? Well, one of the best ways to start is to actually journal about your emotions. Yeah, just write about them and do this just for yourself. It doesn't have to be something that someone else is even going to read. What you can do is pick three emotions or even three different times during your day and reflect on how you felt during that time in your day and explore the various emotions on your emotion wheel and talk about that inside your journal. If you're ready to take it to the next level, you can actually share your emotions with someone else. Now, the easiest way to actually go about doing this is to read to someone else what you put in your journal. That can help you so that you don't have to think too much about it as you're doing it. You can just simply read it to someone and ask them to listen. Now, another way that you can share your emotions with someone else is just to kind of share it in the moment. You can still use your emotion wheel to kind of pick through what emotions you want to talk about. It's a good way to label your emotions, share them with someone, and then you can even discuss them with someone that you trust. When you're doing this, you're talking about your emotion, you're sharing the situation that got you into that emotion, and then having a nice discussion with that other person about how you felt. Now, if you really want the emotion wheel to be beneficial for you, you want to make this a routine. Have it be something that you do on a weekly or even daily basis. So choose a time that might work for you. Maybe it's at the closing meeting at school. Maybe it's uh, first thing when you're done with school. Maybe you have a day that's devoted to checking in and using your emotion wheel to check in about different times during the week. This is also a great activity for teachers to use for their students for journal writing, when you just have that free time to write inside your journal. Take out your emotion wheel, look at what you have, and start journaling about it. 
There's one really important thing I want you to remember when you're using your emotion wheel and talking about your emotions. Emotions are not good and they're not bad. They just are. We are humans and that means that we're emotional beings. So own your feelings, own your emotions and get to understand them. And then you can also learn how you can take the right actions when you feel a certain way. You don't have to fix your emotion and you don't have to fix someone else's emotion. What you can do is describe them, talk about them. And if you're sharing with another person and it's their turn to tell you about their emotions, the best thing you can do is listen. So let me know if you plan to create your own emotion wheel by adding to the comments. What a great way to start your own conversations about emotions. If you want more great ideas of how to creatively integrate social emotional learning into your classroom, be sure to check out my free workshop. In it, I share with you my three secrets to building a classroom environment where your students can thrive and you can rekindle your joy of teaching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. My name is Elizabeth and remember to keep inspiring yourself so that you can be inspiring to your students. And be sure to let me know in the comments if you made your own emotion wheel. I can't wait to hear from you.